Awesome. So, uh, I'm really, really excited that um, David invited me to, uh, to come speak to you this morning. So, um, basically what I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself to start off with, but then I'm going to um, talk about, uh, hopefully I'm going to change some of your own perceptions of your own business, about how you manage um, the value proposition, the pricing and the product which you sell. So, just to give you a little bit of a background about uh, me, so I, at 18 I left school and started out life as a systems analyst, um, so working for a medical devices agency. I did that for four years. When I first started working in that company, there were 15 people, so it's a relatively small business, about 1.2 mil turnover. Um, by the time I had left four years later, there was only eight people working in that business. Um, five of them, unfortunately, got made redundant because of the systems which I'd implemented within that business. Um, I'm pleased to say they've now got gainful employment elsewhere, um, so I don't feel quite so guilty. Um, the other person, unfortunately, got caught looking at naughty things on the internet, so we won't talk about that too much. Um, uh, so I, I knew that as an 18-year-old, I wanted to start up and run my own business. I had this very much sort of entrepreneurial spirit within me. Um, I didn't know quite what I wanted to do, and actually the systems analysis job which I had was, um, it gave me a very good grounding into uh, deep understanding of business processes and systems and uh, how to make things run more efficiently um, and how to automate processes. Um, so I, I left that in 2002 and then set up my own web design agency and I built that up to um, having 250 clients um, over the best part of a decade um, so that took me up to about two years ago and then the web design industry and probably some of you will have experienced this became very heavily commoditized so we started hearing things like cheap, DIY, one-on-one, -on -one, Wix, free, Weebly, WordPress, all of those usual sorts of things. And I'd always built my business around the values of offering the, the best possible quality sites that we could produce. So we focused on um, uh, web standards, compliance, all the, all the usual stuff you hear, you hear, search engine optimization, performance optimization, I, performance optimization, make sure your site loads as quickly as it possibly can do. Um, and I realized that after 10 years, I started to have some very difficult conversations with people. And, and I don't know if any of you, how many of you have got websites, by the way? Just so nearly everybody, right? When you went through that process of um, uh, engaging with the web designer, how many of you experienced that? Um, so you sent your brief to them, they then sent back a price, you then probably tried to bargain with them a little bit. Um, and then it started this ping pong match, which probably went on for several weeks or several months, of you not really understanding what was going on through that process, then not really quite delivering exactly what you'd asked for. And so the three months down the line, you end up with a site which is kind of, sort of, all right. You know, and it's doing something for your business. How many of you kind of experienced that kind of that ping pong match? Okay, so I thought about, and I started off, that's how I ran my business. And about sort of five years into it, I realized that this was just confusing for the client. The conversations we were having were just really difficult. So how could we kind of break this down into like a really simple process? And actually what I did is I created a website prototyping workshop over the course of two days. We get the client in. I can educate them about customer journeys and content and those sorts of things. And by the end of the two days, we've got a working prototype of the website that they've been a part of creating. And so it really flipped the whole web design process on its head. So two years ago, I wrote my book on my business startup and wanted to um, instill some, I wanted to educate people about the values of engaging with the web designer, but also um, educate people, small businesses, about all the things that I wish I'd known 10 years ago. Um, and so I, I, as a result of that, I started to get invited to do a lot more one-to-one -one work, consulting work, and now I'm a business coach, basically. So I'm not, no longer doing the practical implementation, and my web business kind of works for itself, which is wonderful. So I'm going to teach you about the process I went through to create that, that two-day workshop, and the importance that kind of sits behind it. And I've got a very simple model, and these are things that you can change today in your business. So the pricing, your product architecture, and how you pitch your business. You can make actual changes today because businesses are based on ideas. You don't actually have to have a physical product built and finished in order to be able to go out and pitch an idea. So if there's something which you're toying with within your business, like just go to a networking event and talk to other people about it, pitch your idea. A lot of people spend this time, spending like months building this, perfecting this awesome product. And then when they launch it, they've got no customers because they never did any of their market research. And that's kind of like the, this seems to be the new wave of marketing. Whereas actually, if you just got an idea, go out and tell somebody about it, and if they go, oh, that sounds really good, you're probably on something, and then maybe go away and build it. So, um, most people, it starts with the products, so most people know what their product is. So by that, I mean I'm a business coach, right? It's that simple. So if I asked you, what's your, what's your product? Um, I don't know, really, it's service. Services. What kind of services? Business services. 
business services. What kind of business services? Uh, insolvency restructured life. Hey, there you go, there's your product. So what's your product? Uh, we're a charity. We help people affected by multiple sclerosis. Okay, so we all, we all kind of know <coughs> what our product is. <coughs> But then trying to explain the value proposition which sits around that product is the thing which people find the hardest. So we start off with the product of the core, this is what we do, it's plain and simple. Then we move into the value proposition. So the only way that I can really explain this is by actually giving you an example of a client who I've helped. So I worked with a golf pro and he, he managed to sneak onto a webinar which I, I was delivering to um, a group of web designers and he got in touch with me afterwards and he said, I brought this. Stuff's really fascinating, I just don't understand how I can implement this within my business. So here's a golf pro, and the challenges he was facing was that if it rained, he loved doing lessons, so if it rained on a Saturday or Sunday, um, three quarters of his clients wouldn't bother turning up, and he was taking cash in hand. So in any one given day, if it rained, he would lose £180 in a day at £240. So I was like, okay, well, what sort of, what's your product? So he said, golf lessons. So I was like, oh, okay, well that's a bit vague. So they kind of turn up, swing a club about, and they go away. Is that a golf lesson? And he's kind of like, well, yeah. So I was like, okay, but you're not delivering value to somebody out of that. So we developed basically five different products. So it's drive further, drive more accurately, pitching onto, um, pitching onto the green, uh, lowering your putting average, and lowering your handicap by stroke. So those were his five products then. Very clearly defined, with very clearly defined outcomes. That's where we want to get to. So his value proposition is governed by those outcomes. So I was like, okay, so if we want to guarantee, 100% guarantee, that we're going to lower somebody's handicap by a stroke, like what have we got to do? And he said, well, they've got to turn up to every single lesson, eight lessons, for example. Okay, anything else? So he said, yeah, well, they've also got to practice in between. So, all right, so well, how many times? Two or three times. So we, um, we started to develop this, this value proposition whereby we were going to get the customer to make this commitment to themselves that they were going to turn up to every single lesson, that they were going to practice two or three times a week. And I literally I said to him, look, just get them to send a selfie of themselves on the, on the putting green, on the driving range, so, you know, in between lessons, so that you've got proof that they've actually bothered to do that. Um, and so what we then started to create was he, um, he was like, okay, well, I don't really understand quite how I'm going to sell this. So I said, okay. Let's package it up and call it a product. We'll pa package it up. So this is the outer layer, the packaging. Really simple principles, <coughs> if I can spell. So packaging, and what I mean by that is, for him, we just created an A5 flyer with tick boxes for the first five products. We then had the two things that they, the, the customer had to do in order to achieve the outcome which the Golf Pro wanted to deliver. And then the third section at the bottom of it, and this is where the commitments happens, was just a sign-up form. Simple sign, date, and that was it. And what we, we discovered then at that point was his customers were then making a commitment to themselves in signing that document that they were going to turn up to every single lesson, they were going to practice in between the lessons. So cool, so now we've got a product um, off the back of what was just a wispy service which he used to have. The next part, and this is where it starts to get a bit more, compl well not complicated, but where kind of your, your self-awareness starts to kick in your confidence. He, he said to me, okay, well, how am I going to make more money out of this? So I said, rather than charging on the day, cash, when people turn up to the lessons, I said, you're going to charge up front. And I said, not only that, but we're going to put your prices up to £595 for that product. Um, he said, well, I can't, I can't possibly charge that. So it worked out to more than double what his hourly rate was. People can't do that because nobody in the area is charging that much for lessons. I said, look, print, it's not going to cost you anything. Print out 10 of these flyers. Just try it. How many did he sell in the first week? He sold two or three clients in the first week, right? At more than double what he was charging before. And the, the best bit, the bit that happens that, that kind of I coach on is, I, I call it the pixie dust, which is the really fun bit. So he actually, and this is the bit which tends to be the unexpected that we didn't really, when we were designing his product, we didn't really think was actually going to um, uh, happen or didn't realize it was going to happen. But I spoke to him a couple of months ago and he came back and he said, the first guy who bought his Drive, drive Further course has now come back and bought his um, Lower Your Handicap course. So he's now got repeat business at more money. And it's more than likely that person will keep on, keep on coming back until he's delivered all five of those products. So all that came out of was just um, really, un, un, like when, you, when somebody says, what do you do? Go a bit deeper than that and look at what exactly the value proposition is that you're offering. Is your product just descriptive, or is it, you know, how confident are you about delivering that product? Could you offer a 100% money-back guarantee on the products or services which you offer? 
And I can guarantee that most of you would be like, ooh, I'm not sure about that. But if you go through these steps of understanding really deeply what your product is, understand what value proposition you're offering to your customers, and then finally find a way of packaging it up in a brochure or on your website or something that somebody can literally buy off the shelf, um, you will get to a point, I can guarantee, whereby you will just have 100% confidence in your products. And there's this big thing when you go and sell your products or services, where you're, when somebody says, so how much does it cost? And you kind of go, hmm, uh, I, uh, I don't know, really, I'm going to have to go in. Can I, can I go in, do your proposal, and I'll send it out to you on, on Monday? Now, what that says to people, subconsciously, is this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. It, sa it says that you're not confident enough but in your product to know exactly what value you're delivering and how much you're going to ask for, back in return for it. So again, it's just about, you know, it has greater, uh, a greater, wider impact when you can package up your product and your service um, uh, in terms of kind of that confidence that you start to build within your business. So another part of what I do from a business coaching perspective is about delivering confidence to the person. So we, we have utmost clarity in what we're doing so that when we get in front of people and we talk about what we do, we can do it with 100% confidence. So, is that helpful? Yes. yes. Hundreds of questions that, that could be asked, but Robbie's here for most of the day, so please address your questions directly with uh, uh, Robbie after breakfast. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.